the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals, so that security and liberty may prosper together. Thanks for asking the question, but I'm not going to comment on those specific reports. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, we watch closely China's development of, uh, of uh, armament and, and advanced capabilities uh, and systems that will only increase uh, tensions in the region. You've heard me say a number of times that uh, China is my pacing challenge, and we're going to remain focused on that. Wrong, Penguin. You'll all fly together. Up the river, you birds of a filthy feather. All right, boys. Our umbrella. <laughs> motive, making our young people into weak, dependent candidates for total government security handouts. In my work as consultant and investigator to the Free Our Schools movement, I can assure you that these vicious theories are put within the reach of our young children daily. While you and I are busy working to pay our monstrous taxes, our schools are using these very taxes to subvert our children's minds. I still believe that Build Back Better will not add a dime to the national debt. Correct, it won't. Why would he, why, why should Americans believe that? Because it won't. Go ahead. What if taxes that he says he wants to you know, get more taxes in? What if it doesn't happen? What if the economy goes sour? Lots of things can happen. Mm. What do you, you're going to tell from up there future generations, not even born yet, that they're not on the hook for this. Is that right? That's right, and hopefully you'll report accurate information yourself. By the end of November, if you're 12 or older and want to fly or take the train, you'll have to be fully vaccinated, as will staff.
testing will no longer be an option before boarding. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? It's never actually been imposed. It's not written. It's just nothing more than a press release and a speech. It's never been issued as an executive order. OSHA hasn't actually implemented any rule. That there's no law requiring it anywhere. Congress didn't vote on it anywhere. Yet well, here we are. All these companies, like lemmings off a cliff, are making it their policy. Active duty personnel with at least one dose now stands at 96.7%. And uh, active duty personnel that are fully vaccinated stands today at 83.7%. Um, so we continue to make progress on this. And the total force, at least one dose, 80%, uh, and fully vaccinated, again, across the total force is about 65%. Um, and uh, in the Air Force, uh, they've got 84,850 that are partially vaccinated and fully vaccinated. They've got uh, uh, 385,500. So they're making progress. Now, um, how, how they'll how they'll try to make up the delta here before the end of the deadline, I really think is a Department of the Air Force policy that you'd have to talk to them about. What the secretary's expectation is that uh, commanders will uh, try to get uh, these troops to make the right decision uh, based on information and education. And uh, for somebody that refuses, uh, they'll be given a, a, a chance to get more context from medical service providers as well as their chain of command. It's a lawful order. So obviously, um, if after all that effort, the lawful order is disobeyed, there could be disciplinary action. But, but the secretary believes that there's lots of tools available to leaders short of using the Uniform Code of Military Justice uh, to get these troops to do the right thing for themselves and for their units. 
He wants to see everybody that can get the vaccine uh, so that they can be safe for themselves and safe for their families, safe for their, their units. Uh, so while certainly we're going to defer you to the Air Force for specific policy implementation. Is everyone here as sick of those stupid politicians as I am? And the corporate media. What about the media? They're not covering the issues. They just want to declare a front runner and go back to their mansions. Mo asks, Who wants to abolish democracy forever? Show of hands. But Homer suggests, Why don't we all pick the most ridiculous candidate and write him in? This joke candidate, picked just to send a message, actually starts winning over the majority of voters. Shockingly, this new face is now favored by 53% of likely voters. <laughs> what I I did make the TV thing happen. Cable news reporters jump on board and start calling him a master of the soundbite. His take on immigration reform. Stranger danger. To his disciplined stance on government spending. I only have this much money. The GOP leaders have a meeting and decide to make Ralph their nominee. Look, the William boy's better than anyone else we've got. Hear, hear. Where is <laughs> Lisa warns Ralph that they're just using him. But Ralph responds with, Maybe I want to use them. Maybe you want? to make this country great again. Yep, he wanted to make America great again. This aired in 2007, nine years before it was Trump's 2016. General, the Democrats are telling me I never had it so good. Can that be true when America is billions in debt, when prices have doubled, when taxes break our backs, and we are still fighting in Korea? It's tragic, and it's time for a change. 